Hello and welcome to a new episode of Writing Today. For this episode, I'm going to be reviewing the book The Atlantis Gene by A.G. Riddle. If you enjoy this review, please be sure to like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's begin. The Atlantis Gene is an action-adventure novel written by A.G. Riddle. Intelligence agent David Vale and geneticist Kate Warner find a shared enemy, the Amari. A secret evil organization which believes that wiping out 99% of the population is what is best for all of mankind. The stakes are high for these two to say the least. So here is my spoiler free review on the Atlantis gene. Let's start off the plot. I read this book recently, not sure what to expect. From the beginning I had it pegged as a political thriller or just a fun action adventure. It followed David Vale, a member of a secret anti-terrorist organization called Clock Tower. Right away, Clock Tower falls to isolate David Vale, throwing him into the world without backup of his fellow agents. He is aware of the enemy, the Amari, and sets out on his own to bring them down. His first step is to rescue Kate Warner, a geneticist they kidnapped for some unknown reason. Kate Warner is motivated to stop the Amari as well, as they kidnapped two of the kids she was looking after. So far it isn't too far-fetched and the story has plenty of mystery for the two protagonists to uncover along the way. I settled in for what could turn out to be a Tom Clancy-ish read, one filled with political conflicts, suspenseful moments and thrilling gunfights. Without spoiling the story, the first part of the book is just that albeit not as descriptive or tense as a Tom Clancy. After the first part, the book slows down and slowly sinks into science fiction, and barely believable science fiction. I was surprised how quickly the story turned from something akin to a James Bond film into something so strange and convoluted. All I can tell you is don't expect a plot that is filled with serious, believable moments. It steps off the path of logical reality onto one that is meant to be more fun and fascinating. In the end, this became a bad thing. The strangeness of the story at the end left me with more than raised eyebrows. The Atlantis Gene is the first in a trilogy that I wonder if I should continue. Now, let's talk about the characters. David Vale, one of the leading protagonists, certainly gave me that goofy James Bond feeling. He is clearly a skilled agent, but there are many moments where he is carried forward by sheer luck, particularly in the beginning. As time goes on, he has his falls, but they are nothing to him. The only time he doesn't play the bulletproof hero is when he isn't conscious enough to continue the action. He isn't a very compelling character. Despite his tendency to wing most of his role in extraordinary ways, he insists on being the down-to-earth character, unfazed by most of what happens, even when the plot becomes bizarre. Personally, while it doesn't make him an endearing character, it makes him the perfect character for the story. He is the steady pillar that everything rests upon when it comes to the action. When it comes to the science and plot, it rests on Kate Warner. Her role is very much the exposition slash love interest. When she isn't playing the role of the scientist who makes sense of the story, she is the fish out of water love interest who tags along, in case she gets kidnapped again. Once more, not a truly compelling character, but another pillar for the plot to rest on. Finally, we have the Bond villain, Dorian Sloan, a heck of a name. Dorian is a cold-hearted, murderous madman. When he isn't orchestrating the end of the world, he is shooting everyone in his way, driven by revenge and an almost cult belief in the Amari's cause. Dorian is a superficial antagonist at best. In the beginning, he certainly establishes himself as the main villain, but as the story progresses, he really falls into the role of the anti-David Vale. I don't know what the future books hold for the story, but I'm guessing Dorian becomes more important again. Now let's talk about the writing style. Riddle tries to balance out fast-paced action with slow-paced exposition. While the first part of the book hit me with full-blown action, The second part threw backstory at me that went on into the third and final part. Only in the second half of the third part did action return, perched on the foundation of carefully laid exposition. It wasn't a story that flowed, 
there wasn't much consistency. Maybe the two books will balance that out. And to conclude, as I said earlier, this book left me with a question. Whether I should read the next two books or not, and in all honesty, I might. I was so blown away with how Riddle tried to cram as much story elements into the plot as he could. I found myself laughing with my wife as I struggled to explain what happened each reading session. In such a short space of time, Riddle took it from simple fun into ridiculous fun. Had it not been for the half of the book that was just a rambling attempt to make sense of the story, I might have found myself really enjoying the book. If the next two books carry on without such dull chapters, I can see it being a light-hearted read. However, I certainly won't be reading these books anytime soon. If I come across them on a bookshelf, or I'm in real dire need of something to read, I'll look for them. But the first book has only given me a small interest, not enough for me to actively seek out the next in the series. I wouldn't say The Atlantis Gene is a bad read. I would certainly say it is silly without meaning to be silly, which when you are in the right frame of mind at the right time, can make for an enjoyable read. If after this review this book sounds like the one for you, please be sure to let me know what you think of it once you've finished. I do hope you enjoyed this review. I'll leave a direct link to it in the description below. And I'll see you in the next episode of Writing Today. Good day, good night, and happy reading.